This build is by far one of the best support builds for your teammates when dealing damage to bosses using rocket launchers. And you're also going to be dominating ad clearing. You are also going to be using your abilities to one, weaken targets, which will deal an extra 15% increased damage to that weakened target. And two, you're going to be using your melee ability and also your class ability to wreak havoc on the battlefield when ad clearing. So if you guys like to see more prismatic builds on the Hunter or warlock be sure to let me know in the comments if you guys would like to check out the build for yourself the dim link will be in the link of the description if you guys are interested and also i would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that like button and also subscribe i'm going to be posting more builds primarily towards prismatic in the near future and it's going to be sooner than you think so without further ado let's get right into it let us first start with the super i am using the new void super called the twilight arsenal here's what it does whenever you activate your super it will summon three void axes and if they hit a target the axe will also pull them into it and also whenever you throw your axes they will pull nearby targets and it would also detonate a weakening explosion after it explodes the axe can be picked up by you or your allies and use them as a weapon for a short time so you can either one use your light attack which will slash enemies in front of you damaging them and also weakening them or you can use your heavy attack button and which will throw your axe but it would also consume all of your ammo and whenever you pick up the axe you're going to be having 10 ammo on this axe and there's also going to be a duration for how long you could be able to hold the axe and this thing slaps single target enemies and it's pretty fun so of course this is my first prismatic build and i'm pretty sure you guys don't know what transcendence does so here's what you need to know about transcendence in order for you to proc the ability called transcendence we need to hit targets or deal damage to them with either your light or dark damage. So for your light, it could be solar, void, or arc. And for your dark, it could be strand or stasis. So once you deal damage with your light and darkness weapons, they will eventually reach to full bar. Once you do, be sure to press the corresponding button, in which case for me it's B. And once you do that, it would give your grenade a prismatic grenade. And for titans, it would convert it into a strand slash arc grenade. So whenever you were to throw your grenade it would one suspend them and two jolt the target and you can also generate light and dark energy when getting kinetic kills but in this case we're not going to be doing that and also whenever you proc transcendence when dealing melee damage it would greatly increase your grenade energy regeneration and vice versa so if you were to deal damage with your grenade it will increase your melee regeneration and lastly whenever you defeat targets while transcendent it will extend the duration so the weapons that we are using for this build is strand and soul so a little bit of light and dark, which will help us get transcendence more often. Now let's head to the abilities. On my class ability, I chose to put Rally Barricade just because of the base cooldown, because this build is primarily towards the Rally Barricade. And you can also go for Thruster if you like, but for one of the aspects we are using, I would kind of like to use Rally Barricade instead. I'll explain that once we get to that aspect. For the melee, I do recommend going for Frenzy Blade just because of the melee charges, so we are going to be having three in total because of one of our other aspects we are using on the void grenade i do recommend going for suppressor grenade because one we do have a fragment that would weaken targets and two from our seasonal artifacts as well which will help us even further and you can also stun overload champions because that is the weakness for overload champs because it suppresses them now on to the aspects for the first one be sure to go for consecration so here's what it does whenever you were to slide and activate your charge melee it will launch you in the air dealing a wave of solar energy in front of you if that target is hit by that scorching effect be sure to hit your charge melee again as you're in mid air to go all the way down to the ground and once you do be sure to hit him and he will get a guaranteed ignition so for consecration we are going to be having three melee charges because of frenzied blade and you can also stun unstoppable champions because we are going to be proccing ignitions because of consecration and you're also going to be getting three fragment slots in total just for this aspect for the next aspect be sure to go for drenger's lash whenever you were to activate your barricade it will release a suspending wave in front of you and if that wave were to hit enemies they will get suspended and also this one stunt unstops as well because of the suspending effect so 
let's just say we are using the thruster class ability and we have the drenger's lash so instead of the wave of the drenger's lash going in front of you from a distance it is instead going to appear in you and enemies that are around that suspending orb will get suspended so for me i do recommend going for rally barricade just because of the suspending wave just to go out more in the distance compared to being right in your butt you know but you can choose either or but for me i like rally barricade and for drenger's lash you are going Going to be getting three fragment slots so in total we are going to be having six fragments for this build yes you heard that right six fragments that is really really insane so now let's head to the fragments for the first one be sure to go for facet of ruin it increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and it would also increase the area of effect for solar ignitions i primarily put this one because of consecration and you would also get plus 10 mobility for the second fragment i put facet of dawn powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant powered melee final blows makes you and your nearby allies radiant so again once we melee a target with our consecration or with our regular strand melee called the frenzied blade we're gonna get radiant and we would have the ability to stun anti-barrier champions but in this case we could be able to stun anti-barrier champions with our auto rifle and with our rocket launcher and your also going to be getting minus 10 strength for this fragment and for the third fragment i chose to put is facet of hope while you have an elemental buff your class ability regenerates more quickly so for the elemental buffs that we are going to proc for this build is restoration and overshield radiant and that's pretty much it from those buffs for the fourth fragment be sure to go for facet of purpose picking up an orb of power grants either amplified restoration frost armor woven mail or an overshield based Based on the damage type of your equipped super so in this case i am using the twilight arsenal so we are going to be getting a void overshield for five seconds and you're also going to be getting minus 10 recovery for this fragment and on the fifth fragment be sure to go for facet of bravery whenever defeating targets with grenade final blows it would grant volatile rounds to your void weapons or whenever you were to defeat targets with powered melee final blows it would grant unraveling rounds to your strand weapons so in this case whenever we get consecrated final blows or the frenzy blade final blow we are going to be getting unraveling rounds for the strand sidearm called the call we get onto that later and last but not least for this build on the sixth and final fragment be sure to go for facet of dominance your void grenades weaken targets and your arc grenades jolt targets so in this case we are using a suppressor grenade so we are going to be having the ability to weaken targets but you would get minus 10 discipline and also weakening targets will give us a 15% increase in weapon damage to those weakened targets. Let's now head to the weapons. For the kinetic weapon, I am using the strand sidearm, which is called the call. So here's what it does. Of course, if you guys already know, the indebted kindness is a rocket sidearm. So this is basically it, but on a strand version, in which case I like it even more than the indebted kindness because of the perks for this build. There's actually multiple ways, or should I say you can choose which other perks you like for the build which is kind of cool so here are my suggestions for the build when using the sidearm the first one i am using is strategist this is a new one so final blows with this weapon will generate class ability energy and also activating your class ability will briefly improve this weapon stability and for the second one you could also go for is lead from gold picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon just in case if you're one of those people that are low on ammo and lastly this is for like the end game content such as raids and dungeons and all that be sure to go for slice casting your class ability allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for a brief duration up to a maximum number of targets so if you guys are one of those people that would like to take full advantage of your rally barricade be sure to go for strategist and if you are one of those people that care about the ammo economy for this sidearm go for light from gold and last but not least if you are one of those people that would like to make your enemies deal less damage to you go for slice and the main perk on the fourth column of this sidearm be sure to go for void weapon because it would give this special weapon a 15% increase in damage to mini bosses and vehicles primarily to mini bosses and here's what's cool about the origin trait for the sidearm it is called the dealer's choice final blows with this weapon grants a small amount of super energy equipping multiple weapons from the pale heart increases the effect for the energy weapon I chose to go for a support type route for the build you don't really have to use this auto rifle you can just change it as you please so this auto rifle 
rifle has a unique intrinsic trait called a support frame. Here's what it does. Whenever you hit fire an ally, while this weapon is charged, it will heal them. With rapid healing, it would increase the weapon damage and bestowing restoration to your allies. So you know how the glaive has the energy bar underneath the reticle? So whenever you deal damage to enemies, you will generate energy for that. And once you look at your teammate, be sure to hit fire and you will see this white triangle on their character. Once you see that indicator, that would give you the ability to heal them. Of course, you gotta hit fire if you want to heal them. And now let's head to the perks for this auto rifle which makes this even 10 times better. The third column is called Psychic. Rapidly healing allies grants you and your allies restoration for an improved duration. So that perk would give us the ability to proc the fragment called Facet of Hope. And on the fourth column, go for Circle of Life. Rapidly healing allies will grant this weapon an improved period of increased damage. And last but not least for the origin trade, I put Dealer's Choice just because when equipping multiple weapons from the Pale Heart, it will increase this effect of the origin trait. And now let's head to the power weapon. What's cool about this build is that you do not have to use what I'm using for this build. You can choose any other rocket launcher you like. But for me, I would like to support my teammates through activities in the game. So I chose to put Gallahorn. The intrinsic trait is called Wolfpack Rounds. Rounds fired split into tracking cluster missiles upon detonation. And the weapon perk is called Pack Hunter. You will gain increased handling and reload speed when standing near allies and and also, if you were to fire this weapon, it would also grant Wolfpack rounds to nearby allies, wielding a non-exotic rocket launcher, such as legendary rocket launchers. And if you do have the catalyst, in which I do highly recommend, it would one, increase your magazine size up to two. And final blows with the Wolfpack rounds will spawn a faster, more powerful missile at the target's location. So usually for like DPSing bosses, Gallahorn is pretty schmeat with damage. So by using this exotic chest armor piece called the Hazardous Propulsion, it would enhance the damage from the rocket launcher even further. So here's what this chest armor does, and it's called Danger Close. Weapon precision hits or final blows have a chance to load a kinetic Exodus rocket. Activating your class ability will fire a loaded Exodus rocket. Damaging targets with Exodus rockets temporarily increase the damage you deal with all other rockets. You heard what I said for that part, right? It will increase the damage you deal with all other rockets. This also implies with the strength sidearm I am using for this build. So it would buff the Gallahorn or any other rocket launcher and also the rocket launcher sidearms, which is pretty cool. So you are going to be having six charges. So the more charges you have, the more damage you're going to be afflicting to targets. So whenever you were to get a weapon precision hit or final blow, it would have a chance to load the kinetic rocket. So any of your weapons will proc one charge or more depending on how lucky you are. Also, once you have six charges of of Exodus rockets, be sure to let those micro missiles direct hit targets. So let's just say you have six charges and there's like two enemies in front of you and the red bars. Those mini missiles will go and lock onto those targets, but they will die immediately, which will probably would give you two out of the six buffs because the red bars. So if you were activating your class ability on a high value target, such as bosses, all of those missiles will go to that single target if there isn't any ads around them and that will give you the ability to have times six of weapon damage boost for your rockets and they will last up to 10 seconds for the rocket launcher buff now let's head to the seasonal artifacts on the second column i am using winning hand while using weapons with the dealer's choice in which case we are cabandon precision final blows or rapid kills will cause the target to explode dealing solar damage to nearby combatants having several equipped weapons with the dealer's choice origin trait it will increase the effect of the explosion so we are using the call and also the don't die gun which is called the No Hesitation. And the last one for the second column is Overcharged Armory. Weapons with the dealer's choice will always be overcharged whenever the modifier is active. Now onto the third column, I am using Threaded Blast. Destroying a Tangle with the Strand Weapon will create a larger and more damaging explosion. So we are going to be spawning a Tangle with either our Aspect, Drenger's Lash, or Frenzied Blade. And for the fourth column, there are three of them, and here's what I chose to put. The first one is Void Hegemony. While you have a Void or Prismatic
automatic subclass equipped it, defeating weakened targets will provide a small void overshield. And the last one I'm using for the fourth column is counter energy. When you or a member of your fire team stuns a champion, you gain energy for your least charged ability. And the last two seasonal artifacts I chose to put is the first one called the shield crush. While you have woven mail, frost armor, or a void overshield, your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. While you are amplified or radiant, your grenades recharge faster and deals increased damage. At the time that I'm recording, I do not have all 12 artifacts, but here's the 12th one that I do recommend you should put, and it's called Expanding Abyss. Void sources deal increased damage to weakened targets. I'm pretty sure this video is long as it is, but I'm sorry that I was talking way too much, and I'm pretty sure I don't have much time explaining each and every armor mod for the build. So here you go. It is on screen if you guys are interested. But yeah, I wanted to be as in-depth as possible when it comes to Prismatic, because I know it just came out, and not many people do not know what it is. So I wanted to go more in-depth on Prismatic, rather than explaining what I was using for the armor mods. But once we go later down in the road, I'll go more in-depth on the armor mods. But for right now, I was using Prismatic as I was going more in-depth. And now let's head to the stats. The main stat that I do recommend you need to go for is resilience because it would one reduce the cooldown of your class ability because we are on titan and two we would get a 30 percent damage reduction if you have tier 10 and for the second stat you could also go for recovery or discipline in this case you can go for discipline if you like if you guys made it this far into the video I would like to say thank you like really I really appreciate it for you sticking around this long it really it really means a lot to me so thank you thank you thank you I hope you guys have a good rest of your day evening or afternoon take care and peace but don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you'd like to see more destiny 2 builds and also join the discord i also stream on kick if you guys are interested that's where i make all of my builds so if you guys would like to learn more or have any questions feel free to check me out on kick kick.com slash super apt all right take care and see ya